funeral directors attendees of reddit what is the craziest crap you've seen go down at a funeral serious dude and his brother got in a fist fight over their inheritance at their dad's funeral dang apparently this is more common than i thought in this case the younger brother had done a lot to help his dad with medical issues in his last few months while the older one had apparently barely contacted his father to see how he was doing the dad asked his wife to give the younger brother some of his inheritance right away, while older bro had to wait for his stepmom to pass away. Obviously older bro wasn't happy, despite stepmom explaining that it was their way of repaying the brother for putting so much time into being his dad's caretaker. That almost happened with my mom and her brother at their parents' funerals. The inheritance was all he cared about. When I was a lot younger, around 10, my great aunt died and I went to her funeral. As somber as funerals are, after a while kids will be kids and my cousins and I started wandering around the funeral home bored out of our skulls. We happened across a body in a different room in an open casket, but there was no one in there. No signs. No flowers. I'm surprised the lights were even on in there. It was freaky and one of the saddest things I've ever seen and it sobered us up at once. My older cousin asked the director what was happening since it looked like that room was storing her like she was a prop or something. We found out that she died and some distant relative had paid for the wake out of a sense of obligation since she had no other surviving family. Not one person went into her wake besides my cousins and I. I can't imagine what sort of life she had for things to end up like that. It moved my oldest cousin to tears and she took some of my great aunt's flowers and brought them to the other room so it looked less barren. I was an altar boy growing up and I once served at a funeral for an elderly man and the only person who showed up was his wife. There was a flag on his casket to indicate he was a veteran. 2. 11 year old me was really disturbed at the idea that someone could live a full life and have essentially no one come to his funeral. A lonely but rich client of my lawyer friend wanted to have his ashes sprinkled over Sydney Harbour. The lawyer had spent months trying to get official permission. Without success. One Friday night, half p after office drinks, a few of them decided to catch the Manny Ferry, say a few solemn words and tip the contents of the urn that had been sitting in their office for months into the harbor. The wind caught the ashes and blew them all up over the passengers on the top deck. Attendee but not so crazy as amusing. We're in the church for my great grandmother's funeral. Pastor comes in and starts going off about Madeline this and Madeline that. After several minutes, I had to shift and take a peek at the coffin to make sure we were at the right funeral. Great grandma hated her birth name and always went by her middle name. My grandma did something similar, and at her funeral the guy kept switching between her real name and nickname. My dad died in a motorcycle accident. My aunt, his sister, showed up high with a tooth. She had gone to the crash site and dug around for 2 hours and found one of my dad's teeth, proceeding to show it to many people at his funeral. My little cousin spit her gum out on the corpse and her mom proceeded to laugh, then smacked her on the back of the head. Very godfather of her. Uncle was a defense attorney in South Texas. His funeral was a small service with mostly family and a few friends. However, as everyone was leaving a large group of bikers were waiting in the parking lot. Turns out he had been a part of the group for some time in his younger years and they had come to pay respect. They shook his wife's hand, gave their condolences, and drove off as a group. He was a pretty laid back goofy guy, great with kids, so it was mostly crazy to just find out about that part of his life. I also was always impressed that they came to show support but without interrupting a very personal ceremony, showed a lot of character. The father of a relative that married into my family passed. My father attended the funeral out of respect for our relative, because the man was an absolute awful person. He was abusive to his wife, controlling of his children. He crippled the people in his family, seriously stunted their development, and he was a business owner known to be shady, difficult to deal with, and he'd burned bridges in city after city for years. He managed to bully his way into some power position at the church, which he managed to have divided and shuttered. He died estranged from family. At the funeral, many more people were there than my dad would have expected. The eulogy was very brief, factual. Then the pastor got up to speak, and he spoke about how the end of things sometimes could be healing. He told a story about how he'd had an unpleasant business deal with the man. 
how the church had been hurt, and how it had left him bitter for a long time, and that he'd had to pray for forgiveness when he felt relieved when the man had died, as much love as they'd shown for the man, he knew there was pain there, too, he told them all it was okay to feel their feelings, to release their hurt, my dad said that finally people began to cry, and they were getting up and hugging each other while music played, there was no viewing line, even though there was an open casket, people just sort of left, looking relieved, my dad thought it was a fitting send off, I had an image in my head of a viewing line for the guy but everyone just spits on his body as they walked by. I had a friend that was notorious for one night craigslist hookups with soldiers from the local army base, when he died, a handful of men in the military, that none of us knew, came to the service, his parents have no idea he was even gay. They only knew he was secretly involved with the military in some capacity. Was working a funeral burial service in Vermont and the next of kin decided to have doves released at the burial site. Yes that's a thing. When they were released, a hawk flew out of nowhere and destroyed one of the doves. My co-worker and I had to usher ourselves to the hearse because we were laughing so hard. I grew up in an apartment above a family owned funeral home. When I was 5 I walked into the middle of a funeral service accidentally in just my whitey tighties and a cowboy hat. They laughed. I laughed. My dad gave me the belt ha ha good times. This just made my night. Please do this at my funeral. Everyone was late for my grand's funeral. There was a meet up at a pub beforehand and because nobody had seen each other in years we all lost track of time. When I tell this story people are always shocked but it is what she would have wanted. She lived to make people happy. She was buried with a bag of weed and everyone had to agree they wouldn't dig her up to get to the weed if they were desperate. Again, in my family circle this is very normal and funny but to others, maybe not. Afterwards everyone came back to my mum's house. One of my grand's lifelong friends, and village nutcase, got too drunk and started threatening people who didn't cry at the funeral with a smashed bottle. My mum told him to leave, then he just gave everyone at the house a hug, arranged to have drinks with people, said god bless and left. I was 8 years old and this was the norm. I love my family. Sounds like Irish non-practicing Catholics. My sister and I were seated together in the front row at our father's funeral. It was open casket. So my uncle Al gets up to say a few words about my dad. Uncle Al is kind of a character. Teller of tall tales and loves to hear himself talk. He's up there rambling away some tall tale loudly to the congregation as I lean over to my sister and whisper to her. Watch. Dad's gonna reach up out of the casket with his hand behind Uncle Al and close the lid. Well my sister starts giggling which makes me giggle. So here is my sister and me now trying like heck to suppress our laughing. The more we try, the funnier it becomes and we are now wrestling to try to depress our laughter from the other funeral guests. I look around me. My aunt is staring daggers at my sister and me. A look filled with dang action and disgust. He beady old eyes burning into the backs of our heads. Composure eventually equals and ensued. But we swear dad would have done it had he could. The frick. It's your dad. You're allowed to laugh and think of the good times. How could they just not understand people grieve in different ways? I was at a funeral for a work colleague and her three brothers got into a fist fight during the eulogy. Apparently they all hated each other but loved her and they all blamed the others for her death. It was both hilarious and horrible at the same time. The food afterwards was top freaking notch though. The rabbi giving the eulogy claimed he knew my grandfather really well and often had conversations with him on his deathbed. 1. He mispronounced his first and last name every time he said it. 2. My grandfather spoke almost no English, the rabbi's only language besides prayer Hebrew. I guess compared to a child falling out of a casket during a fight, this isn't crazy, but I found it dishonest and disrespectful as heck. My neighbor worked at a funeral home. Part of her job was selling the coffins. One of her customers had inquired about the cushioning inside, and she informed her of the material. The customer was concerned about this and when my neighbor asked why, she said that she was allergic to it. My brother is a Protestant non-denominational minister who is the on-call minister for our local funeral home when a family doesn't have a preferred one of their own. 
He's told me some crazy stories, but the one that comes to mind is when he was called up literally the last minute for a Catholic funeral. Being Protestant he knew absolutely nothing about conducting a Catholic service and was pretty nervous. This was compounded by the fact that the funeral home didn't have time to give him any info on the deceased other than he was male and relatively young, 2030-ish. When my brother arrived for the funeral he met the mother of the deceased and tried to make small talk to maybe get a few more details that might be useful in his message. During his conversation he asked the mother if the deceased had been ill very long, presuming if there had been some accident the funeral director would at least have tipped him off to that. The mother proceeded to tell my brother that her son had actually been in perfect health, but had died from a self-inflicted gunshot during a game of Russian roulette. Sharing this information with my brother seemed to reopen the wounds and the mother left sobbing in hysterics. He went on to bluff his way through the Catholic funeral the best he could, but he said he was never more glad for a funeral to be over with. Right now I'm in seminary in the ordination process of the Wesleyan Church. One of the first pieces of advice that I got from my district superintendent was to get on really good terms with the local funeral home. Grandpa of my so. Had over 10 kids, they're all present. He had gotten cremated, but the kids had decided that they wanted to enter the urn someplace meaningful, I forget where. So, they all drive there, and then the men proceed to argue as to how to dig a hole, where it should go, how deep, who gets first dibs at digging etc. They finally get it done. They all took turns digging. By the time that they are done, under the harsh midday sun, they are all drenched in sweat in their formal wear. Then one brother decides that it is his job to lower the urn as far down the hole as possible, as just dropping it in seemed too undignified. However, he lowered it too far, because he fell head first in the hole. Only his legs and lower body are sticking up and he can't get out. The other brothers grab his legs to hoist him up. Meanwhile, the sisters are laughing their heads off. My friend committed suicide by shooting himself in the head and the motorcycle gang he hung out with shotguns at his grave. My cousin's baby died in utero 9 months into the pregnancy. At the funeral in grief he accidentally knocked over dropped the baby casket 4 feet above the ground. It was not pretty at all. I can still remember the gasps. My dad is a funeral director. Our family owns a funeral home. He is the kindest, most professional man ever. Old ladies adore him. He looks a little bit like Tom Selleck's Urca Magnum Pie. So seeing a huge burly sobbing man who had just lost his son to a tragic automobile accident attack my father screaming he isn't dead. He is asleep was a bit upsetting. This man cleared three rows of chairs and launched himself at my father. Luckily dad is also a retired bodybuilder. So he was able to hold his own without hurting the morning attacker and still remain understanding and professional. He had done such an amazing job with the embalming that the father of the deceased man snapped and was convinced and insulted that my father put his sleeping son in a casket. Grief manifests in the craziest way sometimes. Also, gypsy funerals. They steal lamps. And old ladies, they steal rolls of toilet paper. My hat's off to your dad for keeping his cool. Not at a funeral, but I used to work at a store that sold funeral things, like headstones, flowers, caskets, etc. A couple came into the showroom and wanted to look around. Everything was going fine, until they found a casket they liked. They wanted to know if it could be wired for a TV and radio. They wanted to know if we could repaint parts of it. They also wanted to know if we could make it bigger, as they didn't think they both could fit in the standard size. I of course, had no idea, but offered to go find out. They said never mind, and that this one would probably fit the both of them. Then they asked if they could get inside to try it out. I politely told them no and excused myself to get a manager, who promptly removed them from the store. It sounds like they wanted to make a bed out of the coffin. One time, a man ran into the funeral and told everyone how they are going to heck. He got thrown out and the power went out roughly 5 minutes later. Turns out he climbed the telephone pole out back and was swinging on the wires. He got electrocuted, fell 40 feet and lived. Funeral director screwed up and my father-in-law was cremated before the family's wishes. She then covered her tracks and manipulated a document to coincide with her story. At my grandfather's funeral, 
The preacher tried his best to make him out to sound like an okay guy, and it was just cringy because everyone knew he was an awful human being who beat the heck out of his wife and kids. The only reason any of the children or grandchildren went was to support his wife, as she stayed by his side even though he was a really evil human being. On a better note, I have a cousin whose husband passed in his 40s from cancer. Obviously this is awful, but he was a great guy, and at the reception after the funeral, there was tons of food, alcohol, and karaoke. Apparently he wanted people to remember that he was a fun and down-to-earth guy who wouldn't want people to be sad. Two very different funeral experiences, and they both underscored one thing. Regardless of what you do, good people will be remembered for being good, and bad people will be remembered for being bad. My sister's boyfriend killed himself. My sister and I look very alike. At the funeral a woman came up to me, mistaking me for her, and grasped my hands and both of hers. I'm so sorry for your loss your father looks like Dr. House she said, in one breath. Later at the ash scattering she threw a bunch of ashes and 10 minutes later was eating a panini in the cafe and she never washed her hands in between. When my grandmother died my cousin, who is a prostitute in Montreal and estranged from the family, showed up drunk and or high to the funeral. She was wearing a see-through black top with a pink lace bra underneath and a very short black skirt. She spent the entire time before the service begging people for money. Oh hi Aunt Ruth. Haven't seen you since I was a kid. Listen, I'm real short this month and could use a few hundred dollars. Grandma Wilder wanted you to help me. People tried to ignore her and a few suggested that she leave but she refused. During the service as the priest was talking and everyone is trying to listen she can be heard whispering near the back of the room still trying to get money off of people. Eventually, my Uncle Jack got up from the front, walked back to her, said you are a freaking embarrassment, took her by the back of the neck and arm and force marched her out of the funeral home. A few other people went outside too. I was young and stayed in for the rest of the service and have never seen her again. I remember what Jack said vividly because it was one of the only times at that point in my life that I'd heard an adult swear. A few years later I heard the rest of the story. Once outside my cousin accused everyone who had gone outside with her of violating her and claimed that she was calling the police. They said go ahead so she called and about 10 minutes later a cruiser showed up. She had warrants in Montreal and Vancouver so she was arrested and taken away. I've never seen her since and I don't even know if she's alive or dead. Probably late to the party. My second or third cousin died when I was 10 or so. He was a product of the 60s. Charlie was his name. Good time Charlie. Has got the blues. Was played at his funeral. His partying buddies did lines of sea off his casket. And my family wonders why I rarely hang out with them. That's pretty freaking bad but. Not directly related to her funeral but. My mom told me about a guy in our town who was a mortician in the 80s. His son died of AIDS and no one would embalm him for fear of catching it. So he had to embalm his own son for the funeral. My aunt, uncle, and cousins tailgated at grandpa's visitation. They drank beer out of a cooler on the bed of their pickup truck outside of the front entrance to the funeral home. Grandpa wasn't into partying, and would have been furious. My aunt yelled at my dad for being too good for them when he wouldn't join them. They also took several things from my grandparents house before the funeral, something they admitted to later, figuring that nobody would miss it. Grandpa wasn't buried in his military cap because it was mysteriously missing. At my grandfather's funeral my alcoholic uncle ran into the viewing holding a bottle of powers yelling I have the power. He manned style. Then another one of my uncles took him into a side room and beat his butt. We're Irish in case no one could guess. Years ago there was this old man that we would give a lift to church. He was very Christian and was always willing to tell anybody how amazing and wonderful God is. But he was also quite deaf. So, one day we were driving back from the service and discussing the sermon. As we are driving, we pass the cemetery and see that there is a funeral going down. My dad mutters something along the lines of seems like people are dropping like flies these days. This old man hears my dad muttering something and assumes that we are still on the topic of the sermon and gleefully exclaims, isn't that just amazing? Fast forward a few years to this man's own funeral. Everybody is standing around the open grave. People are sad and crying and sobbing and so on and so forth. 
And my dear dad decides that it is the perfect place and time to tell everybody the story. Yeah, sobs of sadness turn to sobs of laughter with even the pastor smiling. Strange picture to see people laughing around an open grave. Two of the VFW, I think, guys at my grandfather's funeral got into a wrestling match as we were carrying his coffin to the burial site. Super unprofessional. Obligatory not a funeral director but, I work as a hospital chaplain. I had a patient in the IQ who wanted to get married to his caregiver. They had a marriage license and it was all legal, so I did the wedding. He died about 3 months later. I found out because his grown children from a previous marriage called the hospital. They wanted to know if the wedding was an actual legal ceremony, if the paperwork was correct, etc. The reason they wanted to know is because they didn't know their dad had gotten remarried. Turns out, his kids didn't come see him at all while he was dying. They didn't know he got remarried. Under the state law, 100% of a person's possessions and wealth are transferred to a spouse before they go to anyone else. When dad got remarried, his kids didn't get a dime. Every bit of the inheritance went to his caregiver who had spent the last several years taking care of him every minute of every day while he was dying. And while his kids didn't come to see him, I informed them that yes, it was a legal wedding ceremony. Yes there were the correct number of witnesses. Yes they did have a valid marriage license. And that if they were upset because they didn't get any inheritance then perhaps they should have spent more time with their father while he was alive rather than trying to undermine his legal and lawful marriage to the only person who actually cared about him at the end of his life. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.